Welcome to lecture 6-2. This should be the last lecture covered on the first exam, and we're going to cover the hand. Uh, so this will include the bones of the hands, the joints, uh, all of the movements, as well as the neurovasculature and the muscles uh, in different compartments. Uh, so we'll look at some rules for innervation of those different compartments and muscles, but some of the muscles are going to break those rules. Uh, once you have an understanding of how the nerves travel within the hand, you'll get a good uh, understanding why those uh, exceptions to the rules occur. So of course, uh, the, hand, the bones of a hand, you've got the phalanges uh, of the fingers, the metacarpals, and the carpal bones of the palm of the hand. Uh, so those are going to form different joints at different locations. So of course you have the DIP and PIP joints. Notice that the thumb uh, does not have a middle uh, phalangeal bone. So it only has a one interphalangeal joint and then an MP joint or a metacarpal uh, uh, joint, phalangeal joint. Uh, <clears throat> the bones in the palm of the hand, the carpals, <clears throat> there are eight of them. And there are numerous different mnemonics you can use uh, to memorize those. The mnemonic I learned was some lovers try positions that they can't handle. Uh, so that one sticks in your mind very easily. Uh, and you can go through the list uh, and, and work that out. So here, same view, but x-ray. Uh, so your patients, of course, are going to bring uh, x-ray images to you. You're going to have to be familiar with these and you're going to have to be able to have an opinion about these x-rays uh, at some point in time. Uh, but of course, always, uh, you're not an expert radiologist, so feel free to defer uh, whenever uh, you feel like it. Uh, so we'll also uh, need to know the hand movements, pronation versus supination, as well as the adduction and abduction of the thumb, uh, etc., etc. So be sure you go through uh, the list here, your anatomy atlas, uh, your trail guide, etc. These are also important in the kinesiology class. <clears throat> and of course, uh, abduction and adduction of the fingers as well. So now let's get into some of the structure of the hand, um, some of this neurovasculature that I like so much. So the radial and ulnar arteries traveling within the forearm uh, pass through the wrist <clears throat> to enter the hand. And those arteries are going to contribute uh, equally, somewhat not equally, to two different arches in the palm of the hand. Uh, these arches are called the superficial palmar arch and the deep palmar arch. Uh, so, of course, based on how deep they are within the palm of the hand. The superficial palmar arch you see in a lighter red color on this slide is going to give off common, uh, common palmar digital arteries. And those common palmar digital arteries are going to branch to form proper palmar digital arteries. So here you can see uh, the features of the superficial uh, palmar arch in a more anatomical drawing. The deep palmar arch is going to be deeper than those structures. In fact, it passes behind the uh, uh, metacarpal bone of the thumb. So you can actually see that on the, uh, you can actually find the deep palmar arch both on the palmar side and on the dorsal side uh, in that interosseous space. <clears throat> so the deep palmar arch is going to give off palmar metacarpal arteries that are on either side between the metacarpal bones. Uh, it will also give off a principal artery of the thumb, princeps pollicis, as well as a radial indices artery which runs on the uh, radial side of the index finger, hence its name. So here, again, an anatomical drawing, and in this drawing you can see the principal artery of the thumb and a portion of the radial indices artery there. <clears throat> so let's talk about the innervation of the hand. Uh, the ulnar nerve is going to travel mainly on the medial side of the hand along the uh, ulnar portion of the hand. In fact, uh, its innervation typically splits the fourth digit, the ring finger, in half, as you can see in this drawing where the blue and the yellow. So the yellow indicates the ulnar nerve. Blue indicates the median nerve, which innervates the uh, lateral side of the palm of the hand, but not the dorsum of the hand. So 
the palmar side of the hand, excluding the fingertips. So the dorsum of the hand, uh, the lateral dorsum of the hand, and the fingertips are going to be innervated by the superficial radial nerve. So these are important dermatomes to understand, which give you a clinical insight into what nerves might be impinged and where they might be impinged. You can do a uh, neurological exam to test for sensation in these different regions and as well as testing for motor function in these different regions. And you can figure out, well, do we have a medial nerve impairment or a uh, ulnar nerve impairment? Where might this impairment be? How far up the arm uh, are, am I getting deficits, for instance? So now let's look at the compartments of the hand. There are four different compartments. The two main compartments that we're gonna deal with are the phenar compartment at the base of the thumb, phenar for thumb, and hypothenar for below the thumb. So in the anatomical position, the hands are, are, are the arms, limbs are at a angle downward. The, the, the hypothenar compartment is below the thenar compartment. Then we have a central compartment, which contains mostly the tendons of the superficial and deep uh, flexor muscles. And then the adductor interosseous compartments between the metacarpal uh, uh, bones. So those adductor muscles are between those metacarpal bones and help uh, in the adduction uh, and um, abduction. So here we can see uh, some of those uh, uh, connective tissue structures that separate these different compartments. The main one we'll see when we do the dissection uh, that we'll have to cut through is the palmar aponeurosis, a very thick connective tissue uh, substance on the palmar side of the hand, and we'll have to get underneath it and snip it uh, in order to get to the central compartment and to see the muscles, really, of uh, the rest of the hand. Uh, so <clears throat> now let's take a look at what muscles are within the different components and what nerves primarily innervate them. So the thenar compartment uh, at the thumb is on the um, the uh, median uh, nerve portion of the hand. Median nerve is going to innervate most of these uh, muscles in the thenar compartment, except for one muscle belly. So flexor pollicis brevis has a superficial head and a deep head. So in this image, just, uh, just on top of, well, not on top of, just behind and above the um, the abductor pollicis brevis in red, we can see the flexor pollicis brevis, the superficial head. The deep head, uh, as you might guess, runs deeper, but also longer than the superficial head. And as a result, uh, so it will run farther to the ulnar side of the head and actually passes close to the ulnar nerve. So the ulnar nerve is the closest nerve to that deep head. So that's why it receives innervation from the ulnar nerve. The hypothenar compartment uh, is going to be innervated by the ulnar nerve uh, exclusively, the three muscles in it listed here. <clears throat> the central compartment is going to have the tendons of the flexor digitorums, uh, and attached to those tendons are lumbricals. Lumbricals means worm-like, and it's these small worm-like muscles that extend and attach to uh, the, the dorsum, the extensor side of the digits. The lumbricals are split evenly. Uh, the lateral two lumbricals are innervated by the median nerve, whereas the medial two lumbricals are innervated by the ulnar nerve, as you would expect based on the location of those nerves. So nothing funky there. And then the uh, deep compartment, the adductor interosseous compartment, contains these three muscles innervated by the ulnar nerve. Uh, so you'll see that um, you know, a little bit counterintuitive is that the uh, adductor pollicis uh, muscle bellies, uh, but they run deep toward the uh, median uh, of the hand to the metacarpals, um, toward the midline of the hand. And so they are actually closer to the ulnar nerve, and that's why they're innervated by the ulnar nerve. 
Now the dorsum of the hand contains the tendons of the extensor digitorum. Uh, so we can see that here in this picture, this drawing, in fact, of the uh, dorsum of the hand. Now I'm showing you some of those vectorized images of these muscle bellies so you can get an appreciation for the attachments, for instance, of the adductor pollicis muscle and where they're running. And that'll give you an idea about why those exceptions to the rules take place. Uh, so we can run through these. All of these tendons are in sheathed uh, by bursa that contain synovial fluid, especially within the carpal tunnel. So here's the flexor retinaculum, which uh, forms the carpal tunnel. And you can see those flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus muscle bellies, muscle tendons, in fact, uh, running through the carpal tunnel. So here we have a more anatomical drawing, and we can see the median nerve runs through that carpal tunnel, but the ulnar nerve does not. It runs outside of that tunnel. If we take a cross section through the wrist, we'll see that more clearly. We can see uh, here outlined in this teal color uh, is the carpal tunnel with the tendons of flexor digitorum uh, superficialis and profundus, as well as the median nerve. We can see those tendons are ensheathed in the bursa containing the uh, synovial fluid. Outside of that carpal tunnel is the ulnar canal. Uh, so you can see the ulnar canal has the ulnar artery and nerve within it. When the uh, flexor digitorum uh, muscles are contracted frequently, as in typing or clicking on the computer or whatnot, that causes uh, a abrasion or, or friction uh, between those tendons and the synovial uh, cavity. And that uh, causes edema, inflammation to build up in these bursa, uh, increasing tension, eventually impinging that median nerve within the carpal tunnel, causing that very typical um, pattern of numbness on the lateral side of the palmar uh, surface of the hand. Uh, eventually, of course, the median nerve uh, also contains uh, motor fibers uh, innervating the thumb and whatnot. So that'll eventually uh, result in kind of a, a, a uh, paralysis of those medial or median nerve innervated muscles in the thenar compartment, uh, causing kind of a claw shape, a claw like appearance to the hand. So here we have a higher uh, magnification view of that same image uh, going through, highlighting those different tendons. Uh, so you can take a look at that on your own time. So now another important structure on the lateral dorsum of the hand is the anatomical snuff box. The boundaries of the anatomical snuff box are the tendon of extensor pollicis longus. It's longus because it extends past the IP joint in the thumb, and extensor pollicis brevis because it only extends past the MP joint in the thumb. So within this region here, the contents of this region are very important. Uh, the radial artery travels into the uh, hand through here and forms the, uh, the uh, deep palmar arch at this location. Also within the uh, within the anatomical snuff box, you'll find the scaphoid and the trapezium. Uh, so uh, the important uh, aspect here is that oftentimes we fall, we extend our hand, and we land on that palmar side of our hand. That can cause damage to, it can break off portions of the uh, scaphoid uh, bone um, or the, uh, even the trapezium maybe even the uh, metacarpal bone, uh, but most often scaphoid, resulting in um, a breakage of the artery that supplies those bones. And that can cause a necrosis of the bones within the hand, even though there's no external damage. So if somebody falls on their hand, has a deep, uh, you know, a, a deeper pain, even though there's no breakage in the skin, that can be a sign of uh, a, a vasculature problem causing necrosis of the bones within that uh, area. 
also superficial to this area is the superficial radial nerve, which uh, supplies the dermatome to the lateral dorsum of the hand. So superficial radial nerve at this point is only a sensory cutaneous nerve. Uh, so with that, that's the end of the hand lecture. Uh, good luck studying, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.